Glovebox Live's Nick John interviews Steve Knightley and Phil Beer from Show of Hands before their recent Liverpool gig. And I'm here with one of the hardest working acts in the folk scene, Show of Hands. Phil Beer and Steve Knightley, welcome. Hello there. Hello. Um, in fairness, I don't see you just as a folk act. I think that does you a slight disservice. Um, Pigeonhole you. What do you I think, think our audience, what are your comments on this? Our audience would probably say the same. You know, a lot of them would say, that, well, I don't like folk music, but I like you guys. But to be honest, if you do play the instruments that we play and make the sounds that we play, and given that we were brought up on the folk clubs... Yeah, you've got that tradition, haven't you? We know our folk landscape, and uh, we will get called a folk group, and uh, it's up to, I suppose, not just people like us, but maybe people like Peter Gabriel, Billy Bragg, or, you know, Sting, Mm -hmm. to say, I play folk music as well, Mark Knopfler, and then maybe all of their legions of fans will go, I'll come and check this out. But it still has coming it from the other way round. Yeah, Yeah, it still has to be said. For most music lovers, if you say uh, go to a folk club, if there's ten thousand music lovers in a town, about eight and a half probably don't like the idea of it, but probably Mm. might if they came. So we're going to get labelled that. No way around it. The folk scene per se has enjoyed what people would term a revival recently. I mean, would aspects, you, is it, do you say, no, it's aspects of yeah. it. The folk club okay. thing is about yeah. as unalive as it could possibly be, sadly, because there are still some great folk clubs out so there. It's an ageing audience. Yeah. Yeah. Ageing audience time. not being replaced, yeah. not being recycled. But festival culture, I know it's undergone a little bit of a cull over the last two years because the, of the general economic situation, but that's just a sorting out process. Yeah. Generally speaking, you go to any festival over the summer and you will mostly find a considerable considerably more young people in the audience yeah. than mm. you were expecting so you're no, saying that's from the festival side yes, from the I folk think, side I, think, I, think, I look at festival culture as a distinct culture okay it's almost divorced from the scene if you like it's yeah. a thing within itself okay. and I'm not sure whether you can call a whole generation of young performers a revival yeah. There's certainly not yeah. a revival in audience numbers on the folk scene. Mm. There is a revival in the press interest in folk, and then they'll call it revival just to justify their interest. But, you know, with people like the Mumfers playing banjos and accordions, people would say that there's a folk revival. But mm-hmm. those guys aren't in the tradition of Ralph or James yeah. Taylor or Cat Stevens. You'll never see them hanging around at a festival in a million years. So there's a revival in interest in it, but I'm not sure that's translating it into audience numbers for these very same young performers that Phil's talking That's a about. similar opinion, because I got sort of quite excited about the fact that folk things mm-hmm. as well, and, and I, I did an interview with Chris Wood, and mm-hmm. he was quite sort of downbeat about it, and he said he thought it was a one-generational thing that we run the risk of it, <laughs> sort of just grinding to a halt. Yeah. Well, yeah, but then, then, again, there's never been a, a situation like this where you actually have an, a... a an educational process revolving around folk music. All of my nieces and nephews, my, sorry, my niece, <laughs> nieces, must have been drunk, niece and two nephews are both, of <laughs> both, <laughs> it's, it's been one of those days, you know. My two nephews and my niece are both. Your main weapon yes. is fear, fear sarcasm, <laughs> and yeah. two of your weapons. They are quite. My two nephews and my niece are all heavily involved now in the educational process uh, that connects itself to the folk scene, you know. You've got uh, one going off to Newcastle to do the degree uh, next year when she's had a gap year. uh, They're going off to workshops and weekends and bashes all the time, you know. So there's this very strong educational process going on uh, which seems to be inspiring these young people who are all getting together. I mean, this is up in Preston, where they live. They're all getting together at the weekends with a dozen other friends playing music and all this stuff, you know. As I was a walking to Hambledon Fair 
I spy lovely Nancy combing her hair. I gave her a wink and she rode a dark eye. Says I to myself, I'll be there by and by. There by and by. Funny, I, we got hold of a, a, a live show of Phil and Paul Downs playing. Ah. They must have been 18 or 19, and I was there as well. And you can hear the voices. I recognise the voices of the people running it. They were in their mid to late 20s. Yeah. And when we started playing, that generation, the folk revivalists, the genuine ones, who were basically Steve Rusby and, Kate, uh, and, and, and Jeff Lakeman and all, all the parents... Parents of the yeah. yeah, and those yeah. people are still running the clubs. They are still in ever decreasing numbers. They are still running it. Yeah. They've not been replaced by anybody in their twenties, apart from the wonderful exceptions of people like like Sam mm. and and the guys down you know down in London, Sam Lee and that crowd. Mm. They are in their mid twenties and trying to do trying to run venues, but mm. they are few and far between. Mm. I guess the whole. I mean, the whole scene has changed. The whole music scene has changed. The whole industry has changed, hasn't it? And young people now move. I mean, you you guys were were uh, what I used to term the epitome of the, the cottage industry within the music scene, weren't you? Because you you, and yeah. you you worked that really well. I mean, it worked really well for you, didn't it? And you, we you, changed you, you were on the internet work. quickly. I mean, you, you, you yeah, were we on were. the internet yeah. working with it quickly. Yeah, yeah we did. We, we did that, and the, we realised very early on that the, the best sales force we have are, are, are members of the audience. So that's why we got people to copy the CDs and spread the word. We, we got, we, if anyone wants to film, film away. We have no problem about that. In fact, you should be pleased that people can be bothered. Mm. So, but a lot of people are very protective and defensive about that. So we used all the technology, and now it's it's virtually unstoppable, isn't it? It, it is. It is out there for. Well, everyone. it's a sea of funds, isn't yeah. it? Whatever gig you go to, it. Yeah. and that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. No, that's good. Well, lift me up and lay me down Lay me down, gently down Till I reach consecrated ground Along the old bridge way You've got a new album, Long Way Home. Another tour. You've got your solo projects. I think your touring fell in January. Yeah, well, we're, we're all doing different different things. Miranda is also doing her yeah. first proper solo tour next year as well, okay. which will be especially interesting. But we're kind of building up to what will now be the fifth Albert Hall outing. Uh, next yeah, I was going to ask you that. That's, that's yeah. sort of in the offing, as it were. 20 years since your first visit. Yeah. 1796, <laughs> so yeah, no, yes. What are, what are your memories of 96 then doing there? Big, isn't it? <laughs> oh, we had amazing press. Yeah. We had extraordinary, and we had Sky News live on stage with yes. us. Uh, but they you must have gone into it prepared to lose a sack load of money. Well, did we, did, or, or we, we did. Kind of. We, we did have some guardian yeah. angels. You negated yeah, the risk Heap. a bit. Steve yeah. Heap and a friend Richard Patterson agreed yeah. to underwrite it, but they probably yeah. would have come to us. We probably would have yeah. been gigging for Steve for a while. <laughs> yeah. House gigs yeah. <laughs> every day. <laughs> no, we, the, we had a very good PR lady, but unfortunately, the story because we'd only just stopped playing in pubs maybe a year or two before was a pub duo hiring the mm. Albert Hall for a you know, mad bid for Stardom so, <laughs> and, and that got everywhere yeah. we, the press was unbelievable you can't stop them but it wasn't particularly <laughs> about the music or about what we were doing you know? it was, it was a no, we were a novelty act mm. That worked. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, it's still a novelty. <laughs> oh, I didn't mean that. It's yeah. become our own tribute. Band. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So you're looking forward to that, you're looking forward to that then? Yeah, um, it's um, fun. <clears throat> how, how do you find time? I mean, are you still growing your own gigs? Yeah, yeah. Because that's the that was the, the last time. Um, uh, that I, I've probably had enough of it now. Yeah. I've done we've done it three years. Yeah. Of, um, and I believe you were. I heard you were writing a song a week. I did that. Yeah. That was a yeah. Playing two of them tonight. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I needed to refresh the material a bit. But I no, don't think I, either of you like time off particularly. We, we need to earn. Yeah. You know, show of hands can't pay for our year yeah. because it's an expensive show. Mm. If you look at what we've got today for 400 people, 
that's a big production five crew support you know Miranda yeah. but so A we like doing it or, but as long as it's on our own terms and not, we're not doing you're playing bigger places it's the smallest gig on the tour yeah. Yeah. we are creeping up bit by bit yeah. and the numbers are up for this tour we're not up to the thousand seater but we're knocking at 600 which is an improvement every year so but we like to do the other things and um, mm. the self-sustaining gigs are, are, are good fun mm. you know? Mm. Absolutely. Can I ask you about songwriting? You covered, you do traditional songs. You write. You're contemporary. You are a contemporary writer. You write. You've got political stuff. You've got love songs. You've got everything in there. You, if it's fair to say, you, the style seemed to move a little bit towards Americana with Wake Up the Union. Yeah. The uh, you're back a bit more now, perhaps more traditional. Is there everything? Do you just throw everything into the pot? Well, if you look at the two albums, uh, up to Wake the Union, we've just worked with Leonard and Matt, yeah. Rodney Brannigan and Richard Schindel, as well as Phil and Hannah. Yeah. So by collaborating and learning and listening to them, that's all Americana-based. Mm. You know, I know Phil Henry does a bit of... They're very much into, if you like, I suppose almost Druid English folk at the mm. moment. But at that mm. time, that was what we were learning and playing. And then with Grow Your Own Gig and what we'll be doing, uh, Jackie Oates, countryside stuff, it just seemed more natural to go back and Phil's doing all his maritime stuff to go to the sea and the land again. You know, that was yeah. in the ether. Yeah. And I don't know what we'll do next, but... Uh, know, and how's the process between... Drum and you bass. Yeah. <laughs> Baran, Baran and bass. <laughs> Baran and teacher. Do you, do you rehearse together in terms of the arrangements and the instrumentation? I was going to ask you, Phil, on the instrumentation, because you obviously... Well, uh, funny enough, you know, we, don't, we don't, we tend to... We did more, a bit more of the, of the We've done some this, yeah. this time yeah. around, because he's done his writing a whole bunch of songs, yeah. um, we actually had a series of rehearsals, <laughs> unusual for us, before this tour. Normally, we'll routine the songs that we know so well, and sometimes we'll change either the yeah. arrangement or yeah. the accompaniment or whatever to keep them keep them fresh and that often just naturally evolves but we tend to start singing a new song and a sound check and then three gigs later we and how do you decide which instrument to pick up for a new song I mean is um, it like... it depends how far I've got to walk really <laughs> a lot of also depends <laughs> on um, where it is in the set yeah. We realised early on in this tour we had three slide guitar songs yeah, in, a you know, in a row. So, okay. so we feel and say, yeah. okay, I'll fiddle it or mandolin. Yeah, that's or rehearsing yeah. for a, a live show. Or when you're doing an album, yeah, or when you, you've got a new song. Do you, you must have an idea of, roughly speaking, which direction. And then it's a funny know. little area of presentation that about 80% of the most brilliant artists in the world don't pay any attention to, is text, textural change. I don't mean to rake all the embers But you never told me why You know, if you've evolved a set you're going to play it and you come to this, this thing, so, oh, blimey, three songs with slight guitar yeah. in succession, that's no use. You know, even if they are all songs that we've done for ages with the slight guitar, that's still no use. So if we're going to keep those songs there, something's got to give. You know, there has to be a textural change before the audience has sort of nodded off with slight guitar. Yeah. <laughs> also, I think for a lot of singer-songwriters, if they're just sitting there with the uh, strumming away, you know, they might have a song about, I don't know, Deserted by Samantha, and that is a whole chapter of their life, and it's totally different from meeting Julie. But from the audience point of view, they're hearing the same thing. Yeah. But the person singing yeah. it is in a different landscape, totally. And it's quite disconcerted to find out that people are, well, I didn't know where that began and that ended. You know, it might be a similar finger-picking thing at a similar <laughs> tempo. So you've got to change, you know, as Phil says, the texture. That's why even on my own, I take the quattro out, I take the tenor guitar out, just to give people a different oral, oral experience, you know. And then you can almost do the similar thing uh, but it's, it's totally changed for people my thing is always I, I always always think I'm sitting there watching us and my mantra is what would be a good thing to happen now what would be nothing okay you're coming to the end of da, 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 rocky 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 what would be a good I don't know what, what about if we all got around a microphone and did something a cappella? didn't expect that whereas a lot of musicians say okay I've done that now I'm going to do this at them 
So I'm always thinking that. Like a, it's like a film. You know, a, there was a chase. There was an action scene. What would be a good thing to happen now? You know, do you take it up another level, or do you suddenly make it? You know quiet midnight scene so I think that's that's something I've noticed in listening to you guys it's all about that visual line. what would be a nice so thing to happen and, and very much so I think on this show we've never been as successful about it yeah. you know it was a conscious attempt to break it up into bits so there's lots of chapters hmm. solo sections new songs two road songs two war songs all the big songs in a row you know so it's like different it's very much a routine show like that yeah. cold blows the wind colder runs the ocean and colder still the breath of fate that sends the roaring gales. Stars give the Talking of war songs, how did the collaboration with Jim Carter and Imelda Stoughton for Centenary come about? Uh, well, Steve's known them for years when they were all impoverished actors and musicians living in London. They all lived in the same uh, building of flats. <laughs> and uh, Jim and Imelda lived down and Steve lived at the very top in the garret. Jim's on tour ships, isn't he? He's on a very early version of yes. tour ships. Uh, yes, yes. Our first act tour we ever used. And, uh, and, and that's, before, that's before my time. That's, you actually recorded that. Okay. Yeah, but Can we used your, his version. On yeah, then we stole, stole his vocal for the, the version that we did. Yeah, and so, yeah so they've known each other forever, basically. And then I suppose when I was working with the Albion Band, there was this National Theatre Connection... And, of course, Ashley had worked with Jim especially a lot. Jim had been in Lark Rise because he was a national ah, theatre okay. person we did that. Yeah. Yeah. and so yeah. on and so forth. Yeah. Yeah. So um, there was a circular, circular connection and then Steve asked them. And, uh, so so it, it was an idea that you felt, the, con- the concept. Well, and Universal were going to land two actors yeah. on us <laughs> for the album because it was very much a big record company time. You know, mm-hmm. They were paying for everything. And they were gonna. They were looking at uh, Benedict Cumberbatch. They were looking at oh, what she called uh, Helena Bonham Carter. They had a whole a wish list. Yeah. But when I said, "Well, what about the guy from Downton Abbey?" They went, "Yeah." Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously, he has, I think, the best voice since Richard Burton for this sort of stuff. Yeah, it's yeah, extraordinary. Yeah, that means, yeah. yeah, it's, yeah. it's an amazing voice. Yeah. No, it must have been a really good, really good experience to do. It was. It's amazing. Yeah. We went to Abbey Road. Yeah. And we watched them do their thing, you know. So yeah. it was. Uh, um, but to hear actors at work is amazing, you know. To be in a in a voiceover studio and to see them in the little booth trying different inflections, different persona, different tempos, and when Jim goes, no, no, it should be that speed, and you go, well. You know, <laughs> Could you speed it up? No, no, that's the way it should go. And then you listen back to it. You go, wow. You never realise how much detail is in their inflection and their pauses and their breath. It was quite, yeah, it's quite an eye-opener, really, working with those guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's so, fantastic. Yeah. Well, gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. It's a pleasure. I hope the show goes well tonight. I'm sure it will. I'm really yeah. looking forward to it. We took the long way home. That was a broadcast production by Glovebox Live. Okay.